start by creating an element for our cuboid. Let's give it the class name cuboid. Our cuboid needs six sides, so let's create six child elements with the class cuboid side. To differentiate the sides, I'm going to give each a number, and here are the cuboid sides within the cuboid. Let's start by defining some styles for the cuboid element. We can use CSS variables to define a width, a height, and the depth of our cuboid. An equal width, height, and depth will give us a cube. Let's apply a background color, and let's use HSLA 0, 0%, 100%, 0.2. .2. Each side will need to be absolutely positioned so let's use position relative on the cuboid. Let's begin styling the sides. Let's give them the same background color, HSLA, 0, 0%, 0 0.2. Let's also give them absolute positioning. We can use the nth of type selector to style each side. Let's start with the first side. The height will be the height we defined for the cuboid and the width will be the width. Then we are ready to transform that side and we want to translate it half of the depth on the z-axis. For this, we can use calc var depth times 0.5. Wait, we didn't see any change. To see our changes, let's rotate the cuboid. Let's rotate it on the x-axis by 24 degrees and on the y-axis by 32 degrees. The first cuboid side should have moved on the z-axis, but nothing has changed. And that is because we need to apply transform style, preserve 3D to the cuboid. Now we can see that our cuboid side actually went further back on the z-axis. So if we times the depth by a negative, it will come forwards. The second side, we want to appear at the back and the rule is almost the same. So we can copy our info type selector and change it to the second side. And we can create a coefficient CSS variable that we use to calculate the distance on the z-axis. If we swap that out, we should see no change. But if we change that scoped variable for the second side to 0.5, the second side appears where we expect. If we change the depth of our cuboid to 200 pixels, those sides move further out. Let's use the third and fourth sides as the left and right side of our cuboid. We can start with the same rule, but this time it's end of type 3. And for the left and right sides, the height is var height, but the width is var depth. To transform the left side, we want to rotate on the y-axis by 90 degrees and then translate on the z-axis by minus half of the width. To do this, we use calc var width times minus 0 0.5. And we can see our third side, the left side. The right side will be the same. However, it will rotate minus 90 degrees. So we can create another scoped variable of rotation and put that into our transform. Then we can create a rule for the fourth side that updates the rotation to minus 90 degrees. And now we can see the fourth side is here. However, if we update the width, sides three and four are now not in the correct place. And that's because they implicitly used a left zero and top zero for their absolute positioning. To fix that, let's apply left 50% and top 50%. And before our other transforms, let's translate by minus 50% and minus 50% to center them. And now our sides are in the correct place. We can now update our width and the sides follow. For sides five and six, these are the top and the bottom of the cuboid. And we can do a similar thing again. The height will be the depth and the width will be the width. We will need to apply left 50% and top 50% again. And then we need to transform that side. Let's start by translating it by minus 50% and minus 50% to center it, and then rotating it on the X axis by minus 90 degrees, and then translating it on the Z axis by half of the height. We can use calc var height times minus 0 0.5. And now the fifth side is on the top. We can use the same technique as previous and create a variable for the rotation. Let's use a default of minus 90 degrees and substitute that into our transform. Then for the sixth side, we update rotation to be 90 degrees. And there we have it, a cuboid. Let's remove the background color from the root element. Let's also remove the numbers from each side. And now we can configure different widths, heights, and depths. So a depth of 200 pixels, a height of 300 pixels, and a width of 400 pixels. We could even use a responsive unit like Vmin to create a cuboid that will scale with the viewport. Depending on the requirement, we might also change the perspective of our scene. We could even add a second cuboid, and due to the way scoped CSS variables work, we could give it a different width, a different height, 
and a different depth without having to repeat all those styles again. So in review, we can use CSS transforms with the preserve 3D transform style to create 3D cuboids with CSS. If we combine our solution with scoped CSS variables and use calc, we're able to create configurable cuboids where we can define a width, height, and depth to configure the size of our cuboids 